um, excuse me, I want to know how motors work. They're all over the place, and I don't really understand how they work. Great question, electric elephant. Ooh, we're trying something different. Okay, so this particular topic might need a closer look. So I'm going to give you an overview, and then we're going to lose the view of my face, and we're going to zoom into our workspace so that we can actually see what's going on because uh, it's hard to fit everything into one frame. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna explore how motors work through actual projects. Huzzah, and looking at things. Okay, so here is a little bit of motor. Um, caveat, there's lots of different types of motors. So we are gonna start with a simple uh, brushed motor. If you wanna learn more, ooh, ooh. If you want to learn more, oh, hey, I'm really bad at doing rem remembering that I wrote a book. But actually, I did a, I'm really proud of the motor section in this book. Um, and there's lots of good pictures and really cool projects. Oh, look at that. I flipped to one right here. So this is the type of motor that we are, oh, sorry. This is the type of motor that we're going to be exploring in this video and learning a little bit more about how they work. They're quite common. If you open up a toy um oftentimes a motorized toy oftentimes you'll find a little bitty motor like this if you open up your phone you're going to find different types of motors like the motor that makes your phone buzz Bzz, there's a motor in there that does that it's so cool and there's a lots of different motors in the world around us um but you know if we're going to learn how things work might as well start small and simple and accessible and safe I like that. We did a lot of alliteration there. But yeah, for realsies, uh, I cover a lot of motors in the book, um, beginning with breadboarding. Um, so if you want to learn more, check it out. And also, of course, there's lots of great online tutorials. Let's set that down for now. Um, before we get into motors, we have to understand a really, really important phenomenon called electromagnetism. Ooh, that's a big word. Don't be worried. We'll break it down. Electro, meaning electricity magnetism meaning magnets yeah so why do i keep holding up this thing this is an electromagnet the middle is a standard nail um stainless steel i would expect and there's just some wire wrapped around it uh it's got an insulative coating so that i don't uh electrocute myself or shock myself so that's very good um and then i just stripped off the two ends here um, so that the bare wires are exposed so that I can connect an electrical source of energy, like a battery or I have a power supply because these things eat up a lot of energy. Um, so that's the first part of the electromagnet. The second part of electromagnet is, well, magnets. And we're a little bit more familiar with those because we stick them on our fridge or on other little metal surfaces and they do handy things like hold our tools in place. Yeah. So I have here a magnet very strong magnet and uh, as you can see this magnet can pick up this nail Ta -da! but this electromagnet cannot Ooh, oh we lost it i gotta go pick that up off the floor oh no there it is okay sometimes when i drop metal objects i use magnets to find it if i if it takes me more than five seconds i'll grab a magnet and search around with the magnet um bobby pins. Oh, they fall all the time. Okay, so this is not a magnet yet because it only has, uh, well, it ha there's two parts to make this into an electromagnet. The first part is electricity, and the second part is some sort of uh, material that can be magnetized. So stainless steel can be magnetized when you apply an electric field to it. Okay, so let's take a look and I'm going to clean up my workspace a little bit. Okay, so we have our normal, normal magnet. Um, doesn't, doesn't work. Oh, 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 see, this is why I was like, why did I zoom in? Uh, we'll zoom in on the motors. Okay, so does not pick up nail. There you can see. Okay, nothing special there. I am going to turn on my power supply. And, oh, there's some sparks. This is why we have, okay, check this out. Ha ha ha! Look at that! We made an electromagnet! And then if you unhook it, 
one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Maybe. Well, the residual magnetism can last for a little bit, but eventually it'll go away. Maybe. All right. Um, so there you go. That is an electromagnet. You apply an electric field, and that's really just a moving electric current. Well, I'm simplifying a bit. But you, you apply electricity um, in the right way to an object, a uh, material that can be magnetized, and you can create a magnet that can be controlled with electricity. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that's laying the foundation for motors. And fun fact, electromagnetism is how a lot, how we make a lot of stuff work with electricity. Speakers, microphones, motors, solenoids, all kinds of shenanigans, pretty much electromagnetism. If electricity is moving something, the heart of it is probably electromagnetism. It's amazing. Okay, so let's take a gander at how motors work. Here we go. All right, so here we are with a bit closer of a view of our two motors. They are technically the same, but this one I pulled the back off so that we can see inside of it. We can see inside of it. There we go. So first, let's explore how we actually get a motor to move. So I added a resistor here because motors are real greedy and they hog all kinds of energy. Uh, meaning uh, if you basically, if you give a motor electricity, it will take as much as it can. Batteries can only output so much, but my power supply can output a lot of amps. And so I don't, whoops, that's a probe, sir. <laughs> my resistor came off. I don't want, you know what? We are going to unhook that. Um, I don't want my motor to take up uh, too much amperage. And by amperage, I mean electric current. So that is the amount of electricity that is flowing. Um, I just want my motor to turn on. So maybe I just want my motor to turn on. Maybe. Okay. Well, I guess we're not going to use a resistor. Woo! That was a lot. Okay. There's a little sparky spark. All right. So that's how you get a motor to turn on. Okay. Uh, maybe I picked a too big of a resistor. Um, oh, my camera work needs some help here. Okay. We'll try that again. Okay. We are going to go hands on. Woo! Woo! Okay. So applying electricity causes the motor to move. The end. That's what I want you to take away from that. How does that actually work? All right, so we are going to look inside. And this is the magic bit. Okay, so I want you to look at the inside of the motor and compare it with our simple electromagnet. What do you notice? I'll give you a little bit. Electromagnet, motor. What is similar between these? to creations, objects, inventions. I'll rotate it so you can get a bit of a different view. Also, FYI, you can totally do this at home. You just need a pair of pliers to pop off the back of the motor. And then, okay, so I'm going to put that down. Let's look at the pieces. Okay, so this is called the drive shaft, and this is the thing uh, that rotates so this motor has a counterweight attached to it, which is the end that is spinning. Um, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, yep. So, but this is attached to the drive shaft. So the drive shaft spins and then it spins this counterweight and that causes the motor to shake. This motor does not have a counterweight on the drive shaft right here. Um, so this would just spin when the motor is powered by electricity. I'm not gonna go into all of the details because motors are a beautiful, beautiful invention. Um, and it can be a little bit tricky to point out all of the things with these chunky fingers. Um, well, chunky in the sense of it, they're much bigger than the motor pieces. But what I want to point out are two key things. Um, so first of all, check this out. Nope. Okay. This is too big of a, oh, well, kind of. Um, so <laughs> my nail is too big. Um, wah, wah. Uh, so what my whole point of that awkward interaction, maybe it'll work with a smaller thing. 
No, okay. Womp womp. Welcome to experimentation. Sometimes things work and sometimes things don't. Okay, but what I want to point out is that this is a magnet. This uh, metal piece right here on the outside, this is a permanent magnet. Uh, this is a pretty small motor, so these are quite small, but some motors have giant, giant magnets that could definitely hold up that, that nail. So just take my word for it. Um, underneath each magnet, so there's three of them, right? One, two, three. And underneath each of these magnets is a coil of wire kind of wrapped around um, the, the base of a magnet. So right there, there's a huge similarity between the motor and our electromagnet. We have a piece of material that can be magnetized wrapped by wire. We have a, a magnet that is wrapped by wire and it is on top of this drive shaft. So that, my friends, is the fundamental mechanism of motors. It is an electromagnet. Well, technically it's three electromagnets. So the thing that is going to be really, really difficult to show you is um, the brushes. So the way uh, the electricity connects to this motor um, as the motor rotates. So if we look even closer, maybe, maybe. OK, thanks for bearing with me here. This is like, welcome to Foxbots class. Uh, this is what I do with my students. You kind of just have to be a little patient. There we go. Okay. So um, each of these wire wrappings is connected here. Um, and then this is connected electrically like somewhere in, in here. So basically when you energize this with electricity, it turns this into an electromagnet. And then that causes um, the drive shaft to rotate because, oh, pfft, duh, smart cookies. I just realized my mistake. Okay, hold on. I gotta put this down because I dropped my nail. Okay, so for any of y'all that caught my mistake, ha, lol. The magnets are inside. <laughs> Duh. Okay, um, it's been a hot second since I wrote my book. <laughs> and since I've done this, this is all just off the cusp here. Okay, so there's two permanent magnets. Oh, camera left, camera right. Okay, one permanent magnet right here. See, look. Hey, well, that holds the nail. All right, there we go. I was like, something is missing something here. And then there's another permanent magnet on the other side. So I should stop rotating. Bottom, top. Uh, cool. So there's two permanent magnets in there, top and bottom. And so, whoopsies. Um, so as, so this material is actually exactly, this material is exactly like our electromagnet. It is not a permanent magnet. It is uh, It can be magnetized. So Coming back to when we apply electricity to this wire coil, it creates a, this creates a permanent magnet. And so if you imagine that this is inside, that permanent magnet is now either attracted or repelled by this, sorry, the, the electromagnet is attracted or repelled by the permanent magnet, uh, depending on the polarity, right? And so that causes the motor shaft to rotate. But then once the uh, magnet, electromagnet moves, it is going to be attracted or repelled by this other magnet. And what ends up happening is as, as you go around, as the drive shaft rotates, there's a little piece, I think it's called the commutator um, on this side. There's a little piece, it's hard to hold and spin on this side, um, that, see there's a gap here. So this allows one coil of wire to be energized at a time. So as the motor rotates, the, the connections to your energy source are going to stay in the same place. And so now this one will be, will be energized. Then it's going to rotate. And now this one's going to be energized. And it's going to rotate. And this one will be energized. And so on and so forth. So it's this really beautiful interplay between the electromagnets, which are turning on and off, and the permanent magnets. Because as it rotates, um, because you could imagine if you didn't have this, right? What happens if you do not have this uh, multiple sequence of electromagnets? Well, you have one electromagnet and it turns and then it's like, cool, I'm good. I'm gonna stay here because I'm happy here. 
So what you have to do is you have to de-energize this and energize the next one so that the, the drive shaft keeps rotating. Pretty cool, huh? So this is a three brush motor. Uh, there are uh, motors that have six or even more. Um, and then there's lots and like I mentioned, lots and lots of different types of motors. But the fundamental concept, boom, right here, the electromagnet. And then the rest of that is people being real clever with the way that uh, this shenanigans is designed so that things can rotate appropriately. Uh, it always blows my mind that it works pretty consistently because it's hardware is hard. <laughs> Uh, building things in the real world is really difficult because uh, the real world is complicated and messy and squishy and things break. So it is amazing that motors work at all. And it's really critical uh, that we have these tiny, tiny separations that allow uh, the electrical contact to be um, broken and connected to the next section. Okay, cool. So that that's pretty much it. Um, I'll put these pieces in here. Um, thank you very much for hanging out and learning about motors and electromagnets with me. It has been a minute, but I love this stuff. And it's a really just delightful excuse for me to revisit the magic and wonder of electronics and get to share it with y'all because I just, it brings me so much joy and I want to share that with y'all. Um, and so thank you to Electric Elephant for your delightful question today about motors. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, happy to, to answer anything or, or really po uh, point folks to resources because, um, you know, pictures and, and other ways of exploring these things are a really good way to learn more. Yay. All right. And of course, please let me know if you have any questions about science, tech, engineering, math, um, or, you know, life questions. And I will see you next time, my dear friends. Okay, bye.